Today we're going to review a tool that is an absolute game changer in your shop. This is the Craig Precision Miter Gauge, model number KMS7102. The purpose of a miter gauge is to cut miter joints, obviously. It also, I use it to cut smaller pieces on the table saw that are too small to cut on a miter saw safely. This is also a great option for people who have a small shop and don't have the room for a miter saw set up. There are many different styles of gauges from different manufacturers. I went with a Craig because it's reasonably priced and I have a lot of Craig tools that have always been awesome. The build quality is great. Here's everything that comes in the box. The tape measure is already installed because I've been using it for a while. All right, first step is to dial in the miter bar. There's little set screws on the side that you twist and then you poke out the other side. This will butt up against the miter slot and eliminate the play. Next, we are going to place the base onto the miter bar and attach it with the provided screw. Next, insert the set screw into the positive stop hole. Now slide the T-Track bolts into place and then we are going to insert the bolts into the base plate. Now attach the knobs to the bolts, but don't tighten those bad boys down yet because we are going to do some uh, adjustments later. Now let's take some time and thank our sponsors, my best friend Randy and his dog Caboose. I got this picture off his Facebook and he is going to deal with it. Next, we are going to screw in the handle into the miter bar and we're going to use our Kung Fu grip to tighten it down. This bar is also used to actually tighten the rotation of the miter gauge. And it moves back and forth super smooth because it just greased up the table saw. And then we're going to put on the flip top stop. It, it just runs into a T-track. And uh, yeah, let's just take a look at how it operates. The plastic screw here moves the indicator window be careful not to over tighten it because it will snap off. Place the measuring tape at the one inch mark on the edge of the miter gauge and then move the miter gauge fence to roughly one inch from the blade. Now install the positive stop into the T-Track. This is going to give you a positive stop every time you move the fence. Go ahead and make an initial cut on a piece of wood. I marked mine at 12 inches and it happens to be dead on. Now I'm going to rip down a couple of pieces of poplar so we can make a little miter joint. To move the fence, remove the pin and then loosen the handle. Now rotate the fence until it hits the 45 degree positive stop hole. And then use your Kung Fu grip again to tighten down the handle to lock the fence in place. Now go ahead and cut off the end of this one piece at the 45 degree angle. I had to use the Craig production stop to cut the wider miter joint pieces. And the reason for this is that when you cut one miter joint and you flip it over, the long point will not catch on the side of the flip top stop because it's not wide enough. But the production stop is wide enough. Of course, this is all relative to how wide your piece is. And after cutting the miters, you can see here that the miters are actually pretty tight. Not bad at all. Hey guys, all right, let's go over some pros and cons of this gauge. All right, so the first one we're gonna have is this thing is incredibly well built. It's made out of aluminum and it's very straight, very rigid. This thing is absolutely easy to install. It took me all of about, what, five minutes to install it. Once you get the miter bar dialed in, it's easy peasy. After you get it adjusted, moving the fence back and forth and moving the flip stop is also very easy. It is also a safer alternative to cutting shorter pieces on the miter saw because if you do that, you're gonna have pieces of wood flying all over the place. You're gonna kick back and it's not fun. Trust me, I've tried it before. It's, it's not good at all. It's very dangerous. But, so if you do it on the miter gauge, it's very safe and you have less, you know, chance of killing somebody with a flying piece of wood. All right, so let's go over some cons. All right, so the first con we're gonna have is that it doesn't have the little support base like the Inker setup has. It's a little base that when you cut off, your cutoffs will be supported and won't you know, fall into a blade or whatever. It doesn't have it, so it's a con for me. The next con is going to be it does not have an extension so you can cut longer pieces. One of the things that really bothered me is that when you're cutting miters on this gauge, the flip stop will not work if you have a wider piece. So what I did was use the production stop that comes with the, the main flip stop kit. 
So it's a little bit wider and it will accept some wider pieces too. It's kind of annoyance. And last, the set screw that holds the measure indicator thingy uh, is made out of plastic. So if you over tighten it, it's gonna snap off of you and it's probably gonna ruin your day because it ruined my day once and it was bad and I went home and cried. All in all, this is a great addition to your shop. It doesn't have the features like the more expensive miter grades, but hey, that's the trade off for the price. With all things considering, I'm going to give the Craig Precision miter gauge a seven out of 10. I had to deduct a little bit because it doesn't have the extension for the longer cuts and you have to have a production stop instead of the flip stop to cut the wider miters. I will have a link for this miter gauge in the description below. Every time you make a purchase, it's gonna throw us a little cash for the channel. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you got something out of this. I hope this helps you make a purchasing decision for your shop. And if you like this video, go ahead and hammer that like button and we'll trick that algorithm. Also, if you enjoyed the video and you got something out of it, go ahead and subscribe. All right guys, thank you and have a good day.